All right, in this video, we're going to look at the idea of having a menu and then having some sub menus pop up off that. And basically the idea here is uh, when you open up a menu, for example, if I notice my text global variable GV, I call it go, um, D, that stands for doc. So if I press this red little doc icon, notice the blue goes away um, because I have it animating based on that. I'm going to explain all these animations to you in a second. But when I, when I press the red doc, you know, it brings up these three things. And now inside of here, I can tap on that. It's going to bring up a, like a little sub menu to this menu. And notice this menu here didn't close, so I can do the same thing here, and then I can do the same thing here. And then inside of these things, what we can also do, for example, suppose I want to go back to you know R11. If I want to click on R111, it's going to bring up yet another menu or whatever you want flashing. And the idea here is this, um, being able to navigate through menus without the menu in front of it closing. So notice if right now my GV Go is R111, well that's leaving this guy open, this guy open, and this guy open, as well as my red dock down here. Um, if I go R112, notice the sub or the menu and its sub menu and this thing, they're all staying open. Now if I come back to like R13 now, notice it does close out this sub menu and it closed that icon up here or it faded them away. I do have them animating. And now I can, you know, bring in new pieces here as well. And the same thing will happen for R12. So the idea of having, again, like a menu and a sub-menu, and you can even have sub-menus of sub-menus. You, you can continue this on, and it comes with uh, coding your text global variable correctly as well as uh, applying your animations correctly. Um, so how do I do this? And you know, if I click back on the red uh, icon or the red dock down here, Boom, that's going to close out the entire R menu, and now it's going to make uh, the blue one here. So now the blue, very similar. I can have submenus here as well, and whatever submenu I'm in, I can navigate to something else without all this stuff closing. So I hope you got the idea of what I mean by a menu and a submenu. And what you could easily do here is you could say, okay, suppose you want this dot to be like your weather or music. Well, then you could, inside of here, sure, you could put all of your information, but maybe you want the the uh, album art showing here. And then if you touch this, you can see the duration. You ch touch this, maybe this is your play and pause button. And this over here might be, um, oh, heck, I don't know, whatever else you want to put with music. Or you can do it with weather or whatever you want. Um, RSS things. So, you know, menus and submenus. How do I do it? Well, here we go. So animations um, for the blue dock circle, basically this thing right here is set to fade out if I, if the TC cut, that means a TC cut of this text global variable one. That means if the first letter of this text global variable is a R, I want it to fade out. Otherwise, I want it to fade back in. And I'm applying that code in KOWP. So I'm going to go ahead and go into KOWP and show you some of these um, piece by piece. So let me go to items, let me go to blue dock, and then if I go over to animation, fade out, and I have it set to fade out on that code that you see exactly right here. And again, this means if the first letter, that one, TC cut GV go one, if the first letter of GV go is a R, I want it to fade out because I don't want to see the blue dock if I'm inside of my R menu, if that makes sense. So that's what I have on the uh, blue uh, dock circle. Now, what about these other pieces we have? Okay, what about R1 and all these things? So, R1, well, let me tap on this and let me show you what R1 is. Okay, so notice GV Go is R1. This is my R1 menu. And then every menu I create after that is going to be like R1, and then now you notice over here we have R111 and so forth. So, by you coding it like that, it'll allow you to keep certain pieces, granted you set up your animations correctly. So how do I keep R1 from going away, so to speak? Well, basically, I'm looking at the first two letters, or first two characters. I shouldn't say letters because we have, obviously, letters and numbers here. But if the first two characters of my text global variable go, if they are a R and a 1, I want it to uh, fade in. Otherwise, I want it to fade out. So if I go to R1, that's this red one here. 
If I go over to animation and I go to its thing, I want it to fade in based on that exact code that you see right here. And notice I'm changing the number of characters that I want to look at on my text global variable go. I'm changing it to two characters and I want to look at the R and the one. So as long as this global variable, this text global variable, as long as those first two characters are, are an R and a one, this thing's going to always stay faded in. Um, the only time it's going to fade away is when the you know first two characters of GVGo are not R1. So that's why I have that zero there. Zero means it's going to fade back out. For example, if I touch back on this, um, the GVGo becomes a D. Clearly, the first two characters are not a R1, so it's going to you know fade back out. But now GVGo is R1. If I tap on R11, notice my GVGo is R11, but the first two characters are still an R and still a 1. So this is going to stay exactly where it is. And if I go to R111, if I tap on that, notice my text global variable is now R111. And basically, as long as uh, the first two characters are still an R and a 1, this thing is going to stay exactly where it is. The same thing applies very similar. If you get the idea now, we can look at this one. And I'll tell you what, let me slide this out a little bit. If I come over here to R11, which is this menu right here, um, what I can do to close out of this one, the R111, I can just retap on that guy right there. It'll fade it back out. Now my uh, text global variable is back to R11. So as you can see there, uh, how do I have R11 animating? Basically, if the first three characters of GV go, that's this whole TC cut. If the first three characters are an R, a 1, and a 1, I want this thing to show. So even if I click on R1111, or yeah, R111, uh, notice the first three characters are still R11. I hope that makes sense. Now, if I do R112, notice the first three characters are still R11. So, therefore, this R11, this little menu or submenu here, will stay shown as long as the first three characters are R11. Now, notice what happens if I come down here to R13. So if I come to R13, it gets rid of uh, it got rid of the R11 menu because now look at the first three characters. The first three characters are R13, so that's why this one went away because the first three characters are not that R11 that you see right there. And I, that's how I've coded the text global variables. Now I call them R's because of red, but you can call them W for weather or R for RSS or whatever you want to do. But um, hopefully this does give you an idea of how you can create sub menus. And when you have, you know, you go to this menu, then you go to this menu, then you go to whatever this is doing. It could be another menu. You can code that as well. Um, but you can still easily navigate back to something else without ever really going out of the whole ordeal, I guess you could say. Um, and easily to exit out of this thing, I just tap on that thing right there. So how am I applying some of the touches? And here's all those animation codes. Now, it works very similar for the blue, except I'm using B1s and B11s and things like that, um, as you can see there. Uh, so there's like B12, then here's B121, and uh, then this guy up here is like the, you can't even hardly see that because it blends in, but hopefully you get the idea there. All right, touches. So. If we touch the red circle, well, let me touch the blue circle, and it's doing pretty much the same thing, but let me go back to this red one, since I am talking about that. I probably need to save this and go back to the home screen, because it looks like my phone's getting a little slow. All right, going back to the home screen, maybe. No, what's going on? There we go. All right, so right now my GVGo is D, so none of this R1, R111, or B1s, or whatever, are showing up because my GVGo is D. So none of this stuff is getting uh, met. You know, I don't see any R112s or anything like that. So if I tap on this guy, boom. What's that doing? What code do I have for my touch on this red dock circle? Well, if the first letter of GVGo is equal to R, this is a touch now. If the first letter of GVGo is an R, so it can be R1, it can be R11, notice up here, it can be R112. If the first letter of that text global variable is an R, I want to set it to D. So notice the first letter of this text global variable is an R. Well, if I touch this thing, I want it to set it back to a D. So watch what happens if I touch it. Boom, it goes back to a D. 
So, and, and now what happens? Otherwise, so now if the first letter is not an R, I want to set it, when I touch it, I want it to make it become R1. So that's gonna bring back up that initial menu, which can lead me back into all of these submenus. So that's the code for the touch on that red dot circle. And now the codes for you know R11, R12, R13, the R1, all these are the same. Basically, I'm saying if GVGO is not equal to R11, make it R11, otherwise make it R1. So check it out. Now notice, okay, well, let me come to, I'll tell you what, let me close out. Let me touch back on this. So right now, GV is R1. Well, how do we make R11 animate? If the text global variable go is not equal to R11, well, clearly it's not equal to R11, it's uh, equal to R11. So if it's not equal to R11, we want to make it R11. Well, watch what happens if I touch that. It becomes R11. Now, what happens if I touch it again? So now, if it's not equal to R11, we want it to be R11, but suppose it is equal to R11, we want to set it back to R1. So watch this. Boom. I can close out of that menu. I can do the same thing for R12. So if it is R12, I want to set it back to R1, but if it's not R12, which it's not R12 now, I want to make it become R2. So you can you know, open and close these little sub-menus. And um, yeah, that's how these touches work. And this one here, you know, if uh, this is R113, so basically I'm saying, okay, if the global variable right now, okay, where are we at right now? Our text global variable is R13. Well, this touch here would be if GVGO is not equal to R11, or excuse me, R131, then we want to make it R131. So if I touch it, notice it's going to become R131. Well, now, if it already is equal to this, I want it to go back. I want, if I touch this again, I want to close this and just be back at this menu. And as you can see, that's exactly what's going to happen. And all this stuff works great. If I had this stuff opened up and I want to close out the whole R13, when I tap this, it's going to close this and this together at the same time. Okay, well, I said it was, but it didn't, did it? Boom. Okay, well, maybe that's not going to do it. I have to go in and change some codes there. Yeah, because that sets it to R13. Now it's going to set it back to R1. So it's like it takes two clicks there for it to close that. I can change the coding of it to get it to do that, but um, I mean, that's not that bad. If I press this one time, it's going to close out of that. If I press it again, it closes out of that sub-menu. But I could adjust the coding. i tell you what, while well, I got you here, <laughs> not to confuse you if you're not already confused, but uh, how can I do this? Okay, I got R131 showing up. Well, suppose if I, I want to be able to press this and go right straight back to R1. Let's see if we can do that. I'm going to go into KOWP. It's crazy. You know, I'm sitting here doing these videos and I'm like, yep, got to show you something different. But maybe you're interested in that because I did get a request on doing these like extra menus. And um, that's what kind of motivated me to actually do this stuff. Let me get back all. There we go. I got my docs there. Now, what did I want to do? I want R13, then R131. But what I'd like to do is be able to touch this right here and set it back to R1. So let me go to R13, which is going to be that guy right there. Let me go over to its touch. Oops, no, my bad. That's not R13. Okay, the R13 that I'm touching is actually inside of the R1 group, obviously. You can see that right there. That there, if I touch that, nothing happens. That's just showing you what menu it is, but there's my button. So that's actually sitting inside of R1. Let me scroll to R13, which is that one right there. If we go to touch, all right. So if it's not equal to R13, set it. Okay, I see what you're saying. Uh huh. How can we make this go back? We have to do an OR statement. Here we go. Here's what we can do. Boom. Got it. All right. So we're going to change this. Hopefully you did follow along with what I was just saying about how I'd want to be able to, you know, close out of all those menus. We'd have to change this on all of these, but I'm going to show it to you at least for this one. Um, if GV go, if the first three characters, so if TC, K, 
cut comma gvgo comma 3 is equal to R13 then I want it to become and I bet you can hear that uh, there are HOAs out there doing our yard work but nonetheless here we go so I want to set it to R1 I'm just gonna hush up for a minute till this leaf blower comes by perfect time for him to be coming by right in the middle of me doing a code but nonetheless here we go so if uh, TC cut, if the first three letters of GVGO are equal to R13, so we can have R13, R131, or whatever, but if the first three letters are R13, if I touch this thing, I want it to go to R1. Suppose that it's not, I want to make it R13. And I think this is going to do what I want it to do. Let's save it. Let's go back to the home screen. Let's make sure everything plays out like it's supposed to. So closing my dock. Boom, here's R13, here's R131, and now when I touch this one, it should, based on that code I just did, you know, the code I just changed, since the first three characters are R131, it should close this and this, leaving me with this submenu. Let's see what happens. There we go, that works. And now if I touch it again, it should go back to R13. Yep, perfect. So, um, you know, who you might not even care, but... Uh, this is a little issue that I ran into right here, so um, why not go ahead and show you how to fix it? That's how I did that one. Now, the, again, the difference here is this. If I go R13, R131, now if I press this R13 here, it's going to close this and this, as you can see right there. And now we have the ability to, when we come here, if I just want to close this, I can just press the R131, or I can press the R132. Whereas up here with this R12, if I open up R121, if I press this now, it's just going to close this and go back to this menu. That's the difference in that coding that I just did just a few moments ago. Because um, now, you know, if I press this, I have to actually press it twice, once and twice to close out of those two menus. Whereas this uh, code I just did a second ago, if I want to close, if I press this, it's going to close out of both of these at the same time, as you can see right there. But uh, yeah, there you have it. Well, oh, there's the home screen. But um, that's how you can uh, create menus and submenus, and it involves obviously uh, coding correctly and being smart with how you name your text global variables. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.